got a nice selection of obscenities, if that's what you want. Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. The man ought to be writing science fiction. I think he's sexy. The first selling point about 1974's The Mutations is that the director was Jack Cardiff, the genius cinematographer best known for his collaborations with Powell and Pressburger. Why should we want to keep you here against your will? This was the last and perhaps least of the films he directed. Oh, just look at them. They must have seen something horrible. The second is that it stars Tom Baker and Donald Pleasance, Doctor Who and Doctor Loomis. You and I together. Although Pleasance seems to think he's still Blofeld. Oh, how sweet. Yikes. The film opens with eight minutes of plant footage. This is not a flower, however much it may resemble one. Which ought to be enough to drive half the audience away before the story even starts. Thank you. Despite a brief hint that we might be watching Jurassic Park... Within ten years, it is safe to say, we shall be able to recreate, through time-frozen amino acid strains, a living dinosaur. This is mainly concerned with Pleasance's mad university lecturer, Professor Nolter, trying to create a human-plant hybrid. I achieved this ten years ago. A rat with a twig on it. We are interested in cloning, not in clowning. He is helped by Baker's Lynch. <laughs> who works in a local carnival. Get away from there! Making this a weird mashup of Ed Wood's Revenge of Dr. X. But that's, that's the impossible, Doctor. And Todd Browning's Freaks. <laughs> I'm going to make you one of the To which the Mutations, which also goes by the name Freak Maker, pays tribute. Or potentially just steal stuff. We accept you. He's one of us. The subject is not as well handled as it is in Browning's film, which was contentious to start with. Also... I didn't even know those shows still existed. Me too, and I sort of judge our student heroes for going along. The bearded lady! <laughs> and laughing. It feels like a pretty gratuitous scene. Uh, the lizard woman of Tibet! And there's no reason for us to watch the whole of the show with them. When my mother stuck me accidentally with a safety pin. Suddenly he got the point. I'm only mentioning the heroes now because they barely factor. They're just people for Nolta to experiment on. He'll soon be neither human being nor plant, but with the characteristics and advantages of both. And the wisdom of experimenting on three of his own students and just hoping no one will notice is questionable. He makes it sound like bad science fiction. Just as an example. They've asked me to pick up that Fulbright scholar guy from America. This line from student Tony introduces the last of the hero group. You're Brian Redford. Right. A day later, when they go to the carnival, he seems to be dating student Hedy, the one he just met. This collection of human oddities and freaks is the greatest attraction of its kind in the world. And now... Sometimes these things happen quickly, but... This is our hero couple. They don't share a single romantic moment through the entire film. I'm sure there's a logical explanation. Meanwhile, Nolta has been experimenting on Tony. Lynch, I think I have succeeded. But he got away. That was a struggle. I have to believe there was a more cinematic way of showing that. Tony gets in touch with his girlfriend, initially by phone. Who is it? Then in person. Not the largest concern, but how did he dial the phone? Anyway, Nolter is killed by his creation. Lynch is killed by the freaks. 
Largely, it would seem, over poor working conditions, as most of them don't even know about the mutant plants. What do you want, more money? Why don't you go on strike, eh? And... That ill-defined love story that has been given no attention whatsoever and built up in no way is how the film ends. I love you too. And I need you. I don't know these people. It's no good asking me to care now. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a truly remarkable human curiosity. Thanks for watching. To see our review of The Revenge of Dr. X and other Ed Wood films, click here. Carnivals are great places to set genre movies. What's your favourite? Let us know in the comments below. Alright, if you want to be sick, let's go.